hello beautiful community. Let's quickly together look at the big picture political implications of the Kremlin creating this lane for Boris Nadezhdin to run in and then saying we're going to pull the plug on that lane because we don't like what's happening in it. I could steal an extra 10 minutes of your life by talking about the ins and outs of what went on with the Electoral Commission, but I think it would be an indecent theft because this is a political decision fundamentally. So I think as a result, we can do this chat in under 10 minutes as opposed to in 20 minutes. So the question that you ask me, above all, is, is the Dejden real or is he fake? And often experts, Western experts, talk in these ways, um, depending on whether the Dejden is real or fake. The Dejden isn't hiding anything. Um, what he is, is quite transparent. Um, and so he's neither real nor fake. What instead we have is a situation where the Kremlin creates a path, creates an enclosure for him. He acts in it, and that action transforms him a bit. And after that transformation, he has a renegotiation with the Kremlin. He might say, well, now I have a few more resources, now I have a bit more of this, a little bit more of that. What are you going to give me in return? And this could be something that's simply there to advance Mr. Nadezhdin, or it could be something that could even conceivably be argued to infinitesimally advance liberal democratic values. Um, so we've got a Kremlin lane. Um, we've got a guy who's running in it um, for a multi-motive sort of set of reasons. And he's done this before many times. So it's a song and dance that he has done with them and they have done with him over and over and over and over and over, right? And when he does the song and dance, he has some process of exchange with the regime, and then he, you know, um, that gets cashed out, and he goes on and then does the next song and dance. And somebody might say, well, I'm sorry, if you're doing these songs and dances with the Kremlin, you're effectively just a prop for them. And somebody might say, well, you're a 95% prop, but 5%, you know, this and that, and so maybe it's better than nothing, right? And we don't need to legislate or settle any of these things, right? So quit the real or fake. Realize there's a guy running. Um, as he runs, he himself could transform himself, his understanding of what he's running for, which is what began to happen with Mr. Ndezhin a tiny bit, right? And the Kremlin just sits there and keeps asking, uh, shall we turn this little thing on and off? And it could even reach a point where they can no longer control it and then they might need to turn it off at the mains, which they, is, is a way of turning the thing off they can't control. So that's the dynamic. The Kremlin is thinking about its own benefits. And what are these benefits? They're benefits that it can accrue in its theatrical relegitimation ritual, which is the election. The benefits there are overwhelmingly domestic-oriented, domestic audience oriented, but particularly with um, a gambit like Nadezhdin, they're orienting themselves for a foreign audience too. Um, part of the point is that you're supposed to look at this and say there's a modicum of pluralism in Russia, and maybe that modicum of pluralism means that the Kremlin's stories about the unanimity of the population's backing for Putin as the only politically legitimate institution in, is, in town is is real, you know. So, is Nadezhdin going to play in this enclosure we've given him in a way that's going to benefit us or not? What's in it for us? We keep watching, we keep watching. If it's not working out well, we turn, you know, turn it off at the mains. And there'd be conflict in, in the regime about this. Um, somebody like Mr. Kiryanko might say, yeah, he's Nadezhdin's little flourish on our cake. Let's keep him on there. Somebody like Mr. Patrushev might say, no, I mean, the, the flourish could just top, fall on top of the cake, could make the cake look messy. It wouldn't break the cake into pieces. It would make the cake look messy. We don't want that. So without the flourish, we're 99.9% .9 safe. With the flourish, we're just 99% safe. And why take this risk? And notice that these, these conflicts and this 
sort of reconsideration of whether to do what is historically done with the creation of this enclosure and somebody doing a song and dance in it. All of that happens against the background of um, totalitarian turns, militarization, a sort of a sense in the air of a big conflict with the world or with the West coming in the future. Um, you know, and against that background, the facilitation of this flourish, the facilitation of this um, song and dance looks increasingly ridiculous and less plausible and, uh, than it would have been a few years ago as a device to, to, to rely on. Um, and so in part, we are watching the sort of self-revolutionarization, blah, 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 of the regime. And as that happens, toying with enclosures like the one created for Mr. Nadezhdin will become less um, of a thing for the regime. They may no longer need it. There's one single factor that's worth mentioning that backfired for the Kremlin. And that is that they wanted Mr. Nadezhdin's playing around in the enclosure to divide the Russian opposition. And it didn't. The idea was that Navalny's team, especially without Mr. Navalny there to guide them, would conflict with the rest of the opposition. And Navalny's team would say, screw Mr. Nadeshtin, and the rest of the opposition would say, no, let's mobilize behind him. Um, that didn't happen. Um, and that didn't happen because um, everybody saw these cues, these lines to put a signature for Mr. Nadeshtin. And the Russian opposition looked at that and said, well, we've got to back that up. And um, they didn't conflict much with each other about it and that really disappointed a Kremlin expectation um, and you see that's why the real or fake question doesn't really matter it's not that Mr. Nadezhdin was hoping to divide the opposition it's that the Kremlin was hoping that Mr. Nadezhdin would divide the opposition right? but having said this do keep in mind that the fundamental conceptual difference between the kind of opposition that's in jail and exiled and the kind of um, song and dance that Mr. Nadezhdin is engaged in, right? Um, it, it's a song and dance that could conceivably go anywhere. Um, it's unlikely that it'll go anywhere, but it could go anywhere. Um, so the real or fake question isn't quite appropriate, but there is a fundamental difference between Mr. Nadezhdin and the rest of the opposition. I mean, you, know, you could win the lottery, and in the same way Mr. Nadezhdin could gather so many resources uh, along his journey of playing in his enclosure or running in his lane that he's given, resources of um, popularity, resources of perceived seriousness and legitimacy, that he could want something big in exchange for this from the regime. And the biggest thing he could conceivably ask for is the presidency itself. And I think, you know, he is more likely to get that than you are to win the lottery, but not by much. <laughs> so it's a really long shot. Um, and, you know, how could we get there, you might say? Because, well, are you telling me that this is comparison? Well, with the lottery, I know how it could win. It might be sort of one in a million, but I could win it. How could Nadezhdin win? Well, you know, what Nadezhdin thinks he is doing could be transformed as he does it. Um, you know, and then things could go on and he, he might be seen running outside of his enclosure um, and he might have a crowd with him and on and on and on and on. And on. Um, overwhelmingly unlikely, but, you know, it, 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 it's politics. Um, it's conceivable that things could get out of hand. So that's how to... I'm going in circles here because I want us to sort of break out of this real versus not real distinction. So having mentioned the business about the opposition not being divided by this, l let's take one big takeaway from this that is the point that Greg Uden um, repeatedly makes. And I think it is a point that Nadezhdin's um, candidacy demonstrated. That deep depoliticization is compatible with significant political mobilization as long as it's bridged 
by A, a sense of agency, who is going to do what and how and when to make what difference, right? And B, uh, a sense of an alternate vision. And here what we got is zero vision and 2% sense of agency. That's to say, is there a pathway for me to act? Russian citizen might wonder. Um, that I can explore, exploit, um, that could conceivably make some kind of infinitesimal difference. And if there is, I'm going to consider walking into that path. So what is, and you know, as I say in the latest main channel video that's coming in the next couple of days, um, what is going to shift the Russian people isn't uh, some kind of tipping point where they've had enough. Um, that's not going to happen. Uh, it's rather going to be a tipping point whereby they feel that there is a space to act and maybe even a purpose to act. So uh, an alternate vision and a sense of agency. Um, and I think that th this got demonstrated uh, on a very, very small scale by, by this whole Nadezhdin uh, story. And the Kremlin sense that and the Kremlin feels, nah, Let's not bother with it. So let's love talk very soon.